Finally, months into an ever-increasingly lopsided Republican presidential primary, Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley have finally come to the conclusion that if they want to beat Donald Trump, they may need to directly challenge him. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, folks, I have several clips I want to play, and to be honest with you, I was thinking about not even covering this story in the first place because, based on statistics, probability, it seems almost certain that this is an exercise in futility on the part of DeSantis and Haley. If you look at aggregate polling, Donald Trump is like 50 points ahead of DeSantis and of Haley, right? And they've just allowed that chasm to expand, particularly DeSantis. But this story also discusses and once again shines a light on the failures, the moral and intellectual and political failures of the Republican Party, and that's just like catnip to me. So we're going to play it. I've got a clip here from Donald Trump to just kind of set the stage, just as a reminder of how Donald Trump recently even talks about Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. You know, we're up like 60 points on De Sanctimonious and all these other people, bird brain. No, we're up like 60 points. So they say, maybe, just maybe we can do something. If we could do something in Iowa, maybe we could change the tide. But every week we go up, up, up in Iowa. We're already at a level. You can't go up too much higher. All right. So that was Ron, excuse me, that was Donald Trump boasting, as he always does, um, about the tremendous lead that he has over Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Okay, that's how he talks about them. Now, you heard him say, Ron DeSanctimonious. But you may not have caught that he did make a reference to Nikki Haley, which was bird brain. He's been calling her that for weeks. As a matter of fact, when they were apparently in the same town for a campaign stop, the Trump campaign found out where Nikki Haley was staying, and then they bought a bird cage and bird feed and put it outside her door to troll her. And this was corroborated by journalists. Okay, so that's how the Trump campaign and Donald Trump himself refers to Nikki Haley. Now, I'll also point out before I can play this clip of Nikki Haley, just as a reminder, bird brain here was the Trump appointed United States ambassador to the United Nations. OK, so he worked or excuse me, she worked for him. He hired her. This woman whom he apparently regards as an idiot. He hired her and endorsed her to be the U.N. ambassador. Why would he do that if she was stupid? Why would you appoint someone who's stupid? Right. If you're an executive and you have an incompetent employee that's a reflection of your leadership. Makes you wonder, is she really stupid? Or is it more likely that Donald Trump just can't stand to be challenged or criticized by anybody? Food for thought. So now we're about to play a clip of Nikki Haley herself. And this is in a context of after the uh, Hamas attacks against Israel. And Donald Trump had criticized Benjamin Netanyahu, the corrupt, conservative, right-wing prime minister of Israel, who, by the way, is awful, much like Donald Trump himself. But the reason that Trump criticized Bibi was because Benjamin Netanyahu congratulated President Biden for his victory. OK, so it's just of all the things to criticize Bibi about, of course, Donald Trump would pick something like that. Donald Trump also praised Hezbollah, a terrorist group as well. So that's the context for this. And this is what Nikki Haley had to say. Hey, Ambassador, since the terrorist attack, you've been talking about the need for moral clarity and leadership. You worked for the front runner in this race. We've heard his comments this week. Does he have moral clarity? The problem is, I mean, this is what I've been saying. When I say we need a new generational leader and we have to leave the baggage and the negativity and the chaos of the past, you look at what's happening now. What do we have? We've got Democrat chaos with inflation. We've got it with the lack of transparency in the classrooms. We've got it with open borders. We've got it with crime on our streets. And now we've got it with threats around the world. You don't fix Democrat chaos with Republican chaos. He is so focused on the past. He keeps talking about him and he keeps talking about, you know, headlines of the past. We need someone that's looking forward. We can't afford a President Kamala Harris. And if you right. keep living in the past, that's what because Americans have will the get. Moral clarity to lead right now? Well, I think to go and, and give credit to Hezbollah, to go and congratulate the Chinese Communist Party like he did, and to go and criticize the head of a country who just saw bla massive bloodshed? No, that's not what we need in a president. What we need in a president is someone who knows the difference between good and evil, who knows the difference between right and wrong. Okay, so that was a pretty clear, especially there at the end, a pretty clear criticism of Donald Trump. Now, a couple of things to note. Note how smooth she was in giving her answer, right? I don't like Nikki Haley, but there is no doubt that Nikki Haley's very, very sharp. And I think she gave the most politically efficacious answer she possibly could to that question while also trying to criticize Donald Trump. Note that she didn't, as when she was teed up 
by the reporter with that question. Note how she didn't come swinging right out the gate. She had a really, you know, Republican-friendly preamble, like, listen— you're asking me about Donald Trump. Let's talk about how the Democrats suck. And then she goes on this whole diatribe about how Democrats are causing chaos. And then she makes an appeal to, you know, listen, you do not want Kamala Harris to be president, you know, trying to appeal to the fact that Kamala Harris is a particular boogeyman among the MAGA Republican base, and so on and so forth. And then she eventually criticizes Donald Trump. She says, listen, a guy who, you know, criticizes uh, a prime minister of a country who just suffered a terrorist attack, you know, Hezbollah itself a terrorist organization, giving them props, a kudos. That's not moral clarity. That's not the sort of moral clarity you want in a leader. You want a leader who knows right from wrong, good from evil. Now, what's hilarious about that, that's true. That's absolutely true. But it was also true of Donald Trump when she worked for him. It was true of Donald Trump six months ago. It was true of Donald Trump a year ago. The very qualities that she is now publicly condemning were already apparent within Donald Trump. This is the problem that I have with people who criticize Donald Trump, including even Chris Christie. The things that you're criticizing him now for, I mean, I guess congratulations, but also it's nothing new. It's not like Donald Trump, you know, pretended to be something other than what he is and then ripped the mask off at the last possible second. And we were all just shocked that he's this, you know, buffoon and malignant narcissist, whatever. Now I want to turn your focus to Ron DeSantis, who was essentially asked the same question, and he gave a slightly different and I would argue more aggressive answer. President, President Trump seemed to walk back some of his comments on Israel this afternoon, tweeting hashtag I stand with Phoebe and praising the military. Do you have any reaction to that? Do you think that, you know, why he's walking back those comments? Look, I mean, uh, you know, I think we have the Donald Trump on the teleprompter where he's reading what's on there. Then you have the Donald Trump when he gets off that teleprompter, and that's the real Donald Trump when he starts speaking about those things. And so he attacked BB after the country suffered the worst attack it's had in its modern history, when they're you know, cre just created a war a war government. They're preparing to do a ground invasion in Gaza, and he did that because BB did not. BB congratulated Biden in November. That's why he did it. He hates Netanyahu because of that. That's about him. That's not about the greater good of what Israel's trying to do or American security. And so I think it's fine to, to kind of clean up and do all that. I would say, go out, get rid of your teleprompter. Don't use that as a crutch. Go to debates, show up and debate for two hours. And then we'll be able to see kind of where he's really coming from. So we've seen over the course, every interview, every time he's gotten off the teleprompter for like the last two months, they've had to clean things up for, for what he's saying. So I just want to see, you know, the Donald Trump, this is a different Donald Trump. In 2016, he was freewheeling, he's out there, barnstorming the country, doing all this. You know, now it's just a different guy. And that's just, it's sad to see. But don't it may not have seemed obvious at the time because he couched his language a bit. He did. He wasn't so crude in his response. But what Ron DeSantis just did there was make an attack on Donald Trump's cognitive faculties. He made the same sort of attack against Donald Trump that Trump and many other MAGA Republicans make against President Biden. And we talked about this uh, in multiple videos in the past. Republicans are effectively propagandizing President Biden's gaffes and his malapropisms and malapropers against him to suggest, listen, this guy is this dementia-addled or dementia-riddled buffoon. But if you want to make that approach, if you want to take that standard, you could easily, effortlessly make the same sort of argument against Donald Trump himself, who is also a gaffe machine, who is also prone to malapropers and malapropisms, who constantly gets things wrong. And we've covered them and in, in the increasing rate of those things over the past several months. So DeSantis... I would argue, took an even more personal approach than Nikki Haley. Yeah, Nikki Haley was like, listen, Donald Trump lacks moral clarity and he's a narcissist. Ron DeSantis is saying, yeah, he he's a malignant narcissist and, and also he's on the decline. He's not the same person he was before. They're having to go back and clean up uh, his public statements after the fact, like when he confused Jeb Bush with George W. Bush. Or um, or vice versa, or when he said that windmills were killing whales, uh, and all the things. When he constantly talks about how he beat Obama in 2016 and how he's running against Obama now, all, all the things. So, again, I think it's probably too little, too late. Which, again, in and of itself, is is something that when, if and when. 
Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis lose the primary. There should be a profound introspection within the Republican Party, especially those who wanted, like the, all the donors and all the uh, the other figures who wanted DeSantis in particular, to he, because they viewed him as the heir apparent, to get Donald Trump out of the limelight. There should be a genuine question. What the hell happened? Why didn't this happen? Why were you so hesitant? What was your calculus? What did you think would happen? You're in a competition with this guy who's coming after you, because as soon as it even looked likely that DeSantis was going to, it was months before he announced that he was going to be uh, seeking the presidency. It was just widely reported that he might, just based on polling. Trump immediately identified DeSantis as a threat and was publicly criticizing him on Truth Central and in conversations and in interviews. He was taking shots preemptively. And then even after DeSantis got into the race, he just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the calculus was. Maybe he thought Trump would just get distracted and withdraw from the race, or maybe he thought Trump would be arrested by now, or the 14th Amendment would disqualify. I don't know what he was thinking. But it's, it seems so strange to think that these people are running against Donald Trump in a zero-sum game. They can't be co-presidents, and they've apparently publicly expressed that they have no interest in being vice president. So by definition, you have to challenge and get rid of Donald Trump in the primary. And yet everything they've done so far has suggested that they don't want to do that. So anyway, it's too little too late, but I found this very fascinating. We'll see for the remainder of the campaign if it gets uglier, and perhaps it will be. And perhaps Democrats can exploit the attacks against Donald Trump by the likes of Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Let me know what you think in the comments.